It's your boy Beef here, and we're back with Wurzag, the Great Green Prophet, here to fulfill the Great Green Prophecy. And the stage right now, just a quick little recap. We kind of have been forced out of this region. I, my never plan was never to stay here. So now the intention, mostly because of all this war and the pe Scarbrand running away from me, he's, he's down here. He, I wanted to have a face-off with him, but he seems to not want that. Wurzag's a little too uh, scary, it seems, for, you know, an exalted demon of corn. We got Ugg over here at Morgheim, and Wurzag is ready, soon to be ready to launch his assault on Phyrus, which we'll be doing that very, very shortly. So yeah, my intention now is to actually abandon Grunty Mingle, abandon Stone Mine Tower, keep Ekrand, because it is producing 660 income for me, and that's something I don't want to let go of right away. But otherwise, think of this army here as Wurzag's starting army. We're building a new, more powerful empire. And here we go. And we're back. So let's take a quick look at where Scarbrand is. He's moving towards Gorgazan. He is at war with Kemri, which is good. So that leaves Ugg over here, free to dwindle Morgheim down. Just dwindle their numbers in the garrison until we can get a victory. Or I could fight it easily without taking too many casualties. It's a walled settlement. Their units would cut through the physical resistance of the biggins, so I'm going to hold off on that still. But Ugg is going to play a role here in distracting the Exiles of Corn. Is that the other name? Yeah. Anyway. Let's get into the assault on Virus, shall we? Decisive victory. I could auto-resolve. But because we're going to be doing a lot of fighting, I'm going to fight it. Let's get into it. Wurzag is looking to establish a new beachhead for his savage empire. Casting spells beyond the walls. Ripping the rabble of this Bretonian force apart. The Chevaliers don't stand a chance. Savage Orcs are getting ready to storm these walls. Taking a few hits on the way from there. From that tower there. Wurzag, foot of Gorkin it up. Huge explosion. Bodies flying everywhere. Peasant mobs melted. Which, they are just peasants, but they were absolutely destroyed. Wurzag's going to continue to just beat these boys down as his orcs climb the walls. We got the biggin finally going in. He's going in to get some action. He's going to rip this gate health down and then cause some trouble in there. Got Wurzag blowing up some more units. His magic is going to be very prominent throughout the assault on the Chevaliers de Leonais. Got our boys climbing up the walls. They made it up, and they're going to start taking heads, baby. Taking heads. For Gork and Mork. This was primarily to hit this unit here. It was up against the wall. The boys are rushing in. The boys are rushing in. The big one will soon follow. Warzag looking for another opportunity to cast a big spell. A little, a little jammed up over here, but it's okay. Warzag can do some damage while the boys wait to get in there. Cutting Bretonians down. Savage Orc Biggins. Excellent fighters. Here comes the Biggin through the door. And there he goes! Peasant Bob, say goodbye! <laughs> He's gonna absolutely splatter peasants. These men at arms with shields don't stand a chance either, as you'll just see him continue to put in work. Little foot of Gork here. Clean up some of the units down below. That peasant archer just got splattered. Our boys on all fronts cutting Bretonians down. This mob, this rabble, it never stood a chance. Never stood a chance. When you have this guy looking to cause trouble. Savage Orcs broken through well into the uh, fort now. We're going to be cutting peasants down. Cutting peasants down. Where's Ag? 
brought these boys in. They were taking a lot of hits from the tower. Sort of left them behind. Forgot about them a little. It is what it is. Brain bursts are in there. But the assault on Phyrus is going extremely well. Warzag feels the shores of Lustria are close. As he continues to just level these units. Peasant archer unit all but melted by the foot of Gork, the power that is the green gods. And there we have it. Phyrus is all but ours. The assault on Phyrus is complete. We're obviously going to go ahead and occupy the settlement as it's the new beachhead for the empire we are about to build. Banner of the Eternal Flame is an excellent little item for an army, so that's going to be great in a big blob with Savage Orc Biggins. All of them do with flyer damage, so yes. We're going to want growth. We definitely don't need this right here. Savage Orcs all the way. And it's, it's a tier 4 building. We don't want it in a tier 3 settlement. Simple as that. So we can see Jacqueline went over here. And they have only Sheik, so there may be another army there, seeing as though they don't have anyone else over here. And they might be at war with Cetra, but I'm going to try and block Jacqueline right now, just to limit her movement. And we also can do a little scouting. There's Rapunze. Nothing special about that army. I'm really not afraid of cavalry, seeing as though my army is very well suited to destroy Cav. Sure, their armor could be a bit of a problem, but just sheer damage, like their weapon strength is very high, so... And the bonus versus large is, is a huge... It's 18, it's pretty solid. A little rank up here for Nubzub. I want him to limit movement even more, for sure. Let's take a quick look at Ugg. The Ugg Guzzler. Fucking <laughs> crazy name. So yeah, Valiant Defeat. We're going to continue to dwindle him down. And I'll probably make the assault on that settlement soon as well. But with Scarbrand moving away, I'm not too concerned about it. any army coming towards him. They just keep degrading. They're not fighting. We're okay. Ekron's holding on. Holding on to this Wa as well. Don't believe there's any diplomacy that can be done that I really want to do, sure. They're pretty far away. Will they win what against the... Eh, it's nothing we can do anyway. But I don't think they're going to really make it that long against the dwarves. We'll see. We might get surprised. Obviously dwarves are a no. Clan Verms, we don't want them anymore. Pirates Sartoso, screw them. Okay, so no real diplomacy to be done here. Coming back over to Warzag, and we're on to the next turn. The migration. Got a lot of potential growth coming from this. With a lack of control. Which is fine. We're going to get the extra growth. We need to grow an empire. So the demolition of this building completes. At this point in time, I think you can tell what I'm going to do based on the economy. <laughs> we'll definitely be getting money. Now, Rapunzel hasn't moved to defend either of these coastal settlements. How convenient. Al Hike. As I, as I don't want to have to come all the way back to Al Hike upon Ta and I can't even reach Kofor, so Al Hike. Hello. Nice beautiful city. Mixing are they, do they is that floating or what? What's going on here? Who knows? I <laughs> I don't think they're supposed to be floating. But yeah, close victory, medium casualties, we can't accept that at this point. Field trebuchet could be an issue. But otherwise, we'll cut through this army. Here we go. The assault on Alahike commences. The boys are moving in to take these walls down. None other than the biggin is going to be heavily involved. Sneaky boy Sly. He was hiding last battle. Got our boy Warzag running in. I feel as though these field trebuchets need to feel the, the you know, the strength of, of Gork over here. So, we'll see if we can do a good chunk of damage on these guys. I wanted to route them off as soon as possible. So as to avoid taking any damage from them. Upon being on the walls and breaking into the, the ground level of this fort. But for now, the boys are coming. Oh, the boys are coming. A horde of savage orcs is here to fulfill the Great Grim Prophecy. Let's start breaking down those walls where Zag's going to continue to, you know, move around here, try and cause some more damage. 
Big brain burster over here. Huge crater, blood everywhere. Had a nice blob. You could see three units chunked down. Brain Burster is a very effective spell in the early game against lately armored units. Foot of Gork again back here. Huge damage done. Look at this. Surprised they're even getting up. Yeah, Wurzag's gonna be a theme here, running around causing a lot of damage. Casted the Effigy of the Kid on the Knights of the Realm. Another spell right there. We got the boys on the walls. They're breaking through the doors. They're starting to break through. Almost over here. But the battle on the walls commences. Savage Orcs cutting men down. They are so physically resistant. They are just going to chop through men at arms. Chopping through them. The big and throwing bodies. Fighting against some knights, we got a brain burster that pops right into these pole arms so that they can't do too much damage to the boy. And here he comes! And there's a big splatter. The artillery piece is now set up over here, not too worried about it anymore. We got a foot of gore coming in on these knights. It's gonna be great. Yeah. Took down about 10 knights, really just to chunk their damage down, make it easier for my biggins to come on down here and start sitting them down. Chivalry is dead, boys. Chivalry is dead. And this is no longer your realm. You can see a brain burster went in over there. They're still getting up, recovering. The boys have run in. They're here to raid the back line now. The archers don't stand a chance. Savage orcs pouring in. Sly over here, debuffing the knights. Making them much easier for us to kill. Got a foot of Gork on this line of knights. Everybody's just chopping dudes down. We're chopping them down. Savage Orcs cutting down knights. These knights... This is why I wasn't too worried about the knights. It's because the biggins here, they have so much bonus versus large. And their knights just... Mm, maybe if they did magical attacks... I would be worried. This pole arm unit here. They're really the only ones holding on. And there you go. Hit them with a little effigy of the git. It's not very good against single entities, but you can see their, their numbers are dwindling. So it's working. It is working. On a lot, you know, small entity units, not a, not single entities. But yeah, this pole arm unit now is heading for the hills. Al Hike is now the new jewel of our savage empire. Al Hike assaulted. It will now become the new hub for our Savage Orc Empire. Lichbone Penance, a nice little item to get. Not that much experience, but it was a simple battle. So, let's occupy. Let's see what we got going on here. Got a tier 1 port. Nice, nice, nice. Now, what would we like to do? What would we like to do? I believe we probably... We have growth coming in here. And the greenskins grow pretty quickly as is. So right now I'm going to focus on getting it walled up, so that if we get any threats coming from Sir John over here, which is inevitable, especially with me uh, taking on Rapunz. He's obviously going to hate that. Hopefully the dwarves can hold off a little bit, although <laughs> they kind of like us fighting Rapunz, so maybe they'll chill out. Alright, thick boy over here, he'll take it easy. Let's get started. Nubs dub. I don't know what Rapunz is doing, but... 50... 54. Same wounded chance. I think we're gonna go ahead and go for the block on Rapunz. It also gives us further... Oh my, look at look at this guy. Arc in the black. Failure's okay. I mean, it's not, but we'll be alright. Hexwraiths. Still got cracked up by my boys. It's the only, the only risky unit. Well, I mean, Construct, sure, but there's not enough of them. He's for the future. Let's focus on Rapunz. Alright, let's check on Ugg as well. See Scarbrand is gonna blow up Gorgazan. Oh, that was a full stack for Cetra, we'll see. Morgheim is still a Valiant defeat. I'm gonna give it maybe two more turns, get him to 60 troops. And then we'll potentially occupy Morgheim and switch up the the plan over here. We're never gonna give up Ekrand. 
It's a major Solomon, so we plan on keeping it. 16 is like a decent garrison. Ugg can kind of build on this, although it's not great to see Thoric over here. We do not like that. Let's look at the skill points. Okay, so we got the boys. We're going to be fighting a lot of armies. We're going to go to the island of the continent. It's no longer a little corner of the map, right? An ambush success chance could be useful over there. It could be very useful over there. So I think that's what we're going to do. Where's that going to plan for some cunning actions over there? Evasion chance, the underway will be valuable for us over there. I don't really... Well, getting caught shouldn't be too bad. We have a good army. I'm going to be sacking settlements in the future for sure. The green skins get excellent money out of sacking. Ooh, Sly has a point as well. The great green Can't get conduit yet. I suppose we will go with Curse of the Bad Moon. It's a pretty cheap spell for what it is. And the Nasty Cure is actually... Is that new? Is that a new contact effect? It's a massive debuff to melee defense for 22 seconds on any unit hit by this. That's very interesting. 22 seconds is a long time. That could sway a battle immensely, especially with the armor debuff too. Jeez, we would shred through the knights over here if we cast that on them. Okay, Martek is obviously the next stop. Hopefully we can reach it. The diplomacy was useless last time. Don't think that's gonna change. That is, this isn't gonna happen, let's be real. So let's just get rid of that. Don't want to have to look at it every turn. I mean, Helm of Discord is great, right? It might have been worth it, but we're okay. In comes Rough. Ugg's going to have to start pulling his weight. Hmm. I could probably win. The problem is the walls, so I can't really use their mobility. What? Let's, let's see if we can find a little bit more of an accessible target for uh, for Ugg here. So let's let's break the siege. Let's see how much we get for raiding our way through his lands, just for this first bit of movement here. Yeah, not much at all. Will the sack value be here? Let's take a quick peek. Yeah, that's that's worth it. That's definitely worth killing three units. We'll hustle over there and do that. I don't see a mingle. Oh, okay. Just take it already. Really? And I wouldn't really be able to pierce his armor. I'll just let this sit here. Okay. Let's go, boys. We're on the next turn. And we're back. Sword of Cain claimed. Uh, irrelevant to me. Thank you. Ugh, got himself a rank up. Look out. <laughs> He's going to help us a lot in Lustria. I have to remember that, right? So, itchy nuisance. That'll be useful in any battle. Okay, let's get over here quick, shall we? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he's Scarbrand is... What is Scarbrand doing? Chasing down King... I, can't, I don't even want to attempt that. Okay, Rapunz is clearly more focused on the undead than us, which is excellent, I and mean, that works in my favor. Martek is... Wait, I might even auto-resolve Martek at that point with very little threat coming my way. Do they have two settlements? Only the Grail companions of they do. Is this the entire province? No. I'll put that off for now. I will put that off for now. We got here at fire us some more money. Okay, do I have enough scrap for another upgrade? I do. I can't upgrade you yet, right? Scrap saddles are awesome. I want that. But for now, let's just hit a little harder against those knights. Okay. More tech. I want that uh, iron. For <laughs> I don't know why, but I want it. I'm not going to use black orcs, so. Alright, decisive victory. I will auto resolve this. One, I kind of just want to get an idea on what an auto resolve even looks like against this kind of garrison. Yeah, that's that's definitely an acceptable result, I would say. We'll get that replenishment back next turn. Martek occupied. That's going to be money for the time being. Let's see if I can add any of those. 
ancillaries over to my boy Sly here, pit boss. Yes, sir. Here's another spot. Snotling scavengers. We're not going to be sacking too much right now. Post battle loot, though. I can't give it to him. Sad. Very sad about that. Oh, he already has it. Okay. Any magic items? Sure. Forgot that it got removed from Warzag. Okay. Not much more we can do there with him. Down here, continue down towards Out Clevering. I'm going to be doing a lot of that with Lizardmen. Hero not move. Nubzub. Nubzub. What are you going to do, buddy? Let's block Rapunzel, maybe. They're basically the same. I'd rather block her, so let's go for it. You're the boss. No, no. Her flying is going to be a pain in the balls, unless she decides to land. But just the fact that I can't take her out yes, for boss. an early balance of power boost. All right. So we're set to go for Coffer. That'll give us this Coast of Araby under our control. This has been... A walk in the park, really. I mean, they are just letting it happen. I don't know why they would do such a thing, but we're going to take advantage of that. More controls, good. Mostly for these new lands here. Everywhere else doesn't necessarily matter. Scarbrand's still just chilling, man. Don't know why he would do such a thing. And that's even better sack value. This should be an auto-resolvable battle. I mean, come on. That is laughable. <laughs> really? I know they're good, but, I mean, come on. All right, well, I'm going to have to fight this. Let's see Ugg out on the battlefield for the first time, shall we? Don't tell Sly, but here's Wurzag's favorite Gabo, uh, the Ugg Guzzler. His first appearance on the battlefield. This Night Goblin Shaman is going to be critical for us. Can't wait to get him on an Arachnorok Spider and a proper army. We got the stinky, the stinky gang over here making a move. They're coming in. I didn't want them hitting them all by themselves, though, so I, I end up pulling them back just a second here so we can get a combined charge in. Got the Boar Boys, caused a bit of a distraction for those Blood Letters of Corn. Dangerous units, so I'm glad we were able to take them down early. Casting that debuff spell, and they have poison. It is... they're in trouble. Got everybody. We're gonna start hitting them, taking them down. These guys are a bit more tanky, so it will take some time to chop through them, but... As you can see here, I'm sending Ugg around the side so we can get a nice cast in. He knows where to be to help his boys. It's definitely not on the front lines. You can see we get a nice angle here. And he's just gonna send a magic missile into the fray. Slicing a couple units down. Our trolls putting in work over here. Their AP damage definitely helped in this situation. And we got them terrified. They are horrified of us running away. We'll continue to cut them down as we go. Moving the archers in here to sort of get a firing angle on the bloodletters as they come in. The boar boys. I thought about sending them back around, but I thought maybe that would take too long. So they eventually slip in through here, I believe. Yeah, chasing down these guys. Blood for the blood god, am I right? Come on, boys. Take a head. The Blood Letters are coming in. Very imposing unit. Demons of Corn with their great swords. Sick looking unit. They're not going to stand a chance, though. The fact that they decide to uh, just sort of wither away and die when they're routing is excellent. Archers I had shooting here for a little bit. I probably should have kept going. I think I switched their order here because they almost, they almost took that thing down. Another debuff here, weaken their blood letters a bit. <clears throat> we are letting them know that their god is a false one. Their god is a false one. The green gods are all that there is. Nice debuff here. They have 10 melee attack at this point, so I'm not really too concerned about them doing any damage. Sending a unit over here just to pick off this, this unit of blood letters. Bear into the fray. Don't even try to cast it on them. Should do a little extra damage. And there's magic damage as well, which is gonna just... Well, it'll do something. The boar boys coming in as well, giving them some support. You can see whenever they die, they just burst into flames here. This unit is all but destroyed. They are withering away back to the, the realms of uh, corn. Look at these silly boys coming back for some more. 
taking fire from their own tower. And that's it. They're withering away. Ugh. Did a damn good job as his first day in command on the battlefield. So, close victory with medium casualties was an insane uh, estimation <laughs> to the result of the battle. Decisive victory. Let's take that sack income, please. And let's do some raiding for some sweet, sweet replenishment. No global recruitment. Did his job. Got some value out of that. Don't think I'm going to be occupying it, however. I don't believe I'll be doing that. So I'll probably raise it next turn just to weaken him a bit. And then move on to... Ooh, possibly Galvaraz. I don't know. Scarva and this in trouble here. I mean, his, his army itself is very powerful, so... I died in too much trouble. Oh, look at us. We can reach Culver. I was a little worried that me not putting a point into uh, root. Oh, I have that. Okay, never mind. Pardon me. How, how silly. So, yeah, Culver. Probably an auto resolve once again. Rapunzel seems to have lost her forces, so. She's dead. All this stuff is nice, but I want this province to grow as it's now the only complete province we have. Getting this port's pretty sweet. I forgot that everybody gets it. Some extra casualty replenishment in the region, which is a nice bonus. And the income's obviously nice, seeing as I think the other income is, yeah, 75? Okay, that's way better. Armor of Destiny is fire! Who needs the Armor of Fortune? You can have the Armor of Destiny. <laughs> Alright, well, that's gotta go on. I feel like just the resistance is better than... I guess he's never in melee, so I'm gonna just give him basic resistances. Let's do that. Shield of Talos is solid, though. So it frees up a spot for Ugg. So now Ugg can get in the action. He also needs that. That would have been nice, actually. Not too much, but enough. This is for Goblin? Yeah, he has a couple Goblins. Let's throw it in there. And we're good. That's nice. Ugg is now in a really weird situation. Could go back to Ekrand. We'll find out what we're going to do with him. But for now, this over here is looking great. We got ourselves a nice little established area. Two, three only. We're going to go with money. Until we start to take the Eye of the Panther. Which, once we take Lashik, I believe the mountains are the next play. Not uh, Arkan. Although, he is weak as well. So, we could take advantage of that before the dwarves. We'll see. We will see, because he's probably owns the Wizard Caliph's place too, right? Yes, but that's okay. That gives us the surround on the dwarves. But it leaves Martek exposed, so I think I have the Panther's going to be a nice big battle. After Lashik. I must keep my holy vow. Let's no. go with... This provides growth here, but... We're going to get... I'm going to get a little more growth, seeing as though this supplements some money. Alright. Enough scrap for another upgrade. Why not? Gonna go this way. I want to be able to upgrade these Savage Orc Boar Boys. Biggins. It's going to happen soon. Hero, Nubzub. Nubzub can now... Prepare to... Do they have walls or anything like that? No. Ultra Mountain does, so he'd be useful there. I suppose let's go for the rank up. We have the money. Let us block this guy. Frederic. Oh, Nubsub, you're really letting me down now. It's so critical. Alright, let's get... Even more growth and control. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, saving money in construction, I guess, would be nice. Next turn, we'll save 10% on that. Which might seem minuscule, but I think it's... It'll be worth it. We'll switch to growth right after. Okay. Alright, boys. And potentially a lady. Highly doubt it, though. Lashik, we're going. Okay. Wurzak obviously can't reach Lashik yet. We're gonna go right over here. Brazenly gonna just raid the region. If that is their region. It is. 
Let's raid. I haven't really been using raiding as a way to generate scrap. Which is a decent way to use it, so... Not a lot of movement to wiggle around here. Scarbrand's coming for Ugg! That's alright. Ugg can run him. His movement rate. Oh, he's Force March. Alright. Yeah, this time we're gonna all resolve, but watch the results. I guarantee we lose a lot. More than I would have lost, but that's okay. Alright, let's raise this for the reputation. We don't really need the reputation, but for that scrap, baby. He ran really far. He ran two turns away. Alright, so that light blue line. Some more scrap. Be fully replenished. That's nice. Let's go with Root Marcher so you can effectively run away from Scarbrand. Dubs up. What you gonna do, buddy? Just keep doing what you're doing. You're boss. <laughs> Which is failing. That's alright. Let's make him a more killy. Doing good. More scrap. Hell yeah. And yeah, save 300. Saving 300 there, and whatever the percentage is there, or whatever the number is there. But at this point, we can go back to... I guess go back to growth and control for a turn? I might not even need it, though. We shall see. Nice. More attack. See? The green skins grow so quickly. You don't really need to worry about growth too much. It's really the benefit is the casualty replenishment rate, for sure. 13% extra because of the building there. Okay. Not even going to bother looking at diplomacy right now. Nobody in the general area is a friend for the future or the present. So, let's move on. So, very strange development happening with the AI in that I believe this is Rapunzel's last settlement, right? So, what is Frederic just running away from it for? I understand he's going to lose the battle, and, and the faction's going to get destroyed in that sense, and this is like a desperate attempt to survive, maybe, but it doesn't make sense to me. Even if they were to get to Koffer, he's not going to capture it with, <laughs> with just this, him and some peasant bowmen. I mean, yeah, the garrison's pretty bad, but just off of sheer will alone we can beat him. So I'm not sure what's going on there. But anyway, Lashik will be taken. Uh, first, we have some failed stabbing. This is quite interesting. I could put off going Lashik and murder. <laughs> I mean, he is weak as well. Um, I think I have to do that. Are they friends with anybody? Oh no, they're and the Knights of Origo wouldn't even they would like that. So not that they matter, but still, that's I guess better than them hating it. Okay, yeah, uh, thick Skullson, this thick boy's getting uh, put out. We shall see if I have to fight it. I don't think I even will. Yes, look how weak they are. Yeah, no, nah, I'm not gonna fight this. There you go. Easy money. Don't even need the replenishment. Let's take the easy money. The eight peak loonies. Decent little ROR. I could force march right up in there. Could be worth it. They're not even doing recruiting this turn, you know? I'm definitely going to force march over there. And we'll be getting as close as possible. Well, I guess I kind of want replenishment, so let's just get right on the edge of the border. Full health. I have the Panther. Easy clap. Gonna get sacking over in Lustra real soon. I could taste it. Warzak is ready to show the boys that he wasn't lying all along. He is the damn prophet. Alright. Let's see what Ugg's up to, shall we? Where's Scarbrand? Scarbrand again is... So they got, they ran away from Granti. Rebellion coming. Right, chasing King, the King over here. Ekron can go to tier 4 now. The amount of money I have. <laughs> hmm. That's curious, huh? Take me a long time to build any of these buildings that we're looking at up here. Hmm. 
I mean, like a shaman, you know, it's pretty far. I could just just demolish this building now and get a shaman and not have to worry about it. Yeah, let's do that. I'm going to demolish this building. I'm not going to lose my Savage Orcs anytime soon. I'm super confident in that right now. So we're going to get a nice uh, Orc Shaman going over here so we could send it to Ugg's army as I love Orc Shamans, as you could probably tell on the battlefield. Their magic is effective, very effective. Okay. Ugg hasn't moved. That's not good. I mean, Scarbrand's probably going to come. I, I shouldn't put Ugg at risk like that. I really shouldn't. But kind of want to see if I could get the Galbaraz and sack it. Again, it's one of those wall elements, so it would be a lot more difficult for this army to sustain itself. So instead, I'll just kind of make my way back over. Slowly but surely. Maybe they can get a military access. Okay, would that give me military access if I do that in the future? No. No. I'd have to give him that much gold. That, that could be worth it to not like make him despise me and go to war with me, which would just be annoying because he's got a pretty vast empire and he's bordering my new empire. So, we'll see. Ugg might have to dick around over here for a little while. That's okay. Alright, boys. Imminent Rebellion. Yeah, that's over at Gronti. In a battle, eliminate a lord. Oh, boy. See, again, this isn't going to happen, so they just keep giving me incentives to go back north. It's like, stop it. We're going to Lustria. Even the game doesn't believe in me. It's crazy. That still may happen, so I'm going to leave it. If he ever decides to stop being a bitch. So this rebellion is totally... Just, it doesn't matter. Honestly, somebody destroy this damn settlement already. I'm tired of having to look at it. So... Etc. Hello. Uh, he's on his war sphinx, hanging out, hanging out. Again, his army though. In actual fighting, I don't think it's gonna be a problem. But I don't want to trespass with him. Can I like in Scarbrand? What's your range? It's a lot of movement range, dude. Like I have to run somewhere. This is Agro Migdal. Still sunk in Karnar. We'll go there. We'll go there. Then we'll get some scrap. I know it's three scrap, but we'll get some scrap, I guess. Because, yeah. I mean, where is that going to beat Scarbrand? But Ugg is... Ugg isn't ready. <laughs> I don't know if Ugg ever will be ready. Alright. I have the Panther. Easy, easy. That's super valuable. I hope it's a decent tier. No, it's not. It must have been hit up by these boys, Knights of Borigo. But it's ours. It's ours. Auto resolve, of course. I mean, come on. Occupy the settlements. And I'm. I have to go with the money. I mean, it's just too much money. And we're going to grow quickly. I might have to. Oh, uh, you know what? Yeah, this is a much more valuable settlement. So we're going to do that. Nubs up. Look, if Frederick comes back, I guarantee he runs away once I go face him. But the, the dwarf's got to go first. He's still weak. Frederick, that is. is very weak. There you go. Nubs up's finally a winner. Finally a winner in this, in this part here. We're in the green with the second force over here. So that's nice. I'll actually be able to build up a second army once I establish myself officially over here. And the Tomb Kings don't really hate anybody if you're strong. So as I gain strength, maybe if I even call a Wa just to get the uh, reward here, maybe against... What's your strength rank, speaking of? 27. Yeah, we're not going to be friends with you, Arkin. I was just curious. Kemri, however. Damn bastard doesn't want to be friends with me. Remember Kof Dynasty? Don't want, don't want Volkmar coming up here. He'd be... He would just be annoying. I'm trying to go to Lustria. Okay, so, Warzag taking that. I believe we're good for this turn. Khan, <laughs> the Khan, <laughs> Clan Breaker. Oh, he's a, he's a rebel. We're going to take him down. So Scrag here wants a non-aggression pact. Now, 
I don't dislike the idea of being friends with Scrag, but it doesn't look like Scrag's doing too well. He's got Akendorf up here, but he's surrounded by Barkvar. So in this instance, we're definitely going to deny this. They don't like me enough. I mean, Barkvar is no war with me yet. Clan Angrid is no war with me yet, but they'll meet me. It's, they've already met me, clearly, as it's, you know, it's not Scryer. See how it's grayed out. Unknown faction. So, you yeah, know, declining. Sorry, Scrag, but we're not helping you. Scabby Eye finally met their demise. Surprised it took them that long, to be honest with you. Very surprised. Got some surpluses accruing. Oh, I forgot to change it back to uh, construction cost reduced. It doesn't matter. This is going to be nice to have real soon. And Wurzag can indeed reach Vulture Mountain. This is an excellent little province to move from spot to spot. Like, we are quickly and efficiently wiping out two factions here. King, I wouldn't mind if they take that. I wouldn't mind if they take that, because we're going to go to war with them anyway, so. The Clan Breaker here is going down. We may fight this because Dwarf Garrisons are toughish. Yeah, like, you know, Pyrrhic Victory, that's not acceptable, so. Vulture Mountain will be ours very shortly. No call for aid has been answered for Kung Clan Breaker. The High King has no time to send aid his way. And now he has to face Wurzag and his horde of savage orcs as they approach. Looking to make Vulture Mountain another major city, major hub for the Savage Empire that will catapult them to greatness. Wurzag's going to come right up in here, as you know. Look at cast magic on this one unit of Quarrelers that's doing some damage. We're going to have to let them know. Ooh, that's not good. No entities killed there, but actually, pardon me, that fall damage, am I right? Look at these stunties. They couldn't even stand a chance. If only they had wings. The boys are going to come mount some walls. We're going to also break down the, uh, the gatehouse here. Warzag's looking to cast another spell. Now, their magic resistance is stripped at this point. That's just one of my favorite abilities that Warzag has. It makes his army very powerful. Very, very powerful. The boys are getting ready to break the walls down. We're climbing. Warzag was looking to get an effigy of the get off on Kun, but he ran off. Couldn't get it done this time. Dwarves are notoriously tough, so this we're in for a little fight here. But right here, we're gonna get a savage little foot of Gork cracking units up, sending dwarves flying. Excellent damage done right there. Warzag is an elite mage in terms of damage dealing. The biggin is broken through the walls. The attack orders were made. The sneaky boys are leading the way. Miners stand no chance. The biggin strolling in. <laughs> He's so big, bro. Rogue idols. Ah, oh, yeah. We got a little uh, magic happening here from Sly. Now this I like. The nasty curse here, I mentioned it in a previous video, that's a sick debuff, so it really makes dwarves who rely on their melee defense in order to hold out a lot more weak, you know, we can actually cut through them. Add a little debuff spell, it's not all about Wurzag, you know? Gotta get Sly's magic in there. Big fray over here. Little brain burster. Yeah, we're pushing right through this line of dwarves here. They don't stand a chance. The nasty curse you can see has been lingering. 22 seconds is a long time for a debuff like that to last. I'm very pleased with it. The boys over here. This flank has been greatly weakened by Wurzag. These coilers just getting free shots, though. The boys gotta get at them. There you go. There you go! <laughs> Take them down! These poor dwarves separated from their kin. We got Wurzag. Coming in here. He's inside. Kun's taking damage. The effigy of the Git had already been cast on him once. Dwarves are surrounded over here. You can see they're just getting cut down. A brain burst just went off up top to try and weaken this line. Because we've got a singular unit of biggins here fighting two dwarf warriors. Now, dwarf warriors are nothing special, right? But two on one. Very hard battle difficulty. We had to, cor we had to correct that, so we sent the boys up to back them up. Fresh unit. 
A little foot of Gork here to send this Dwarf Warrior running for the hills. I didn't like what they were doing. But I did love their little formation as it was going to crumble. And now they're going to start getting chopped down with a lot of damage done to them. Route going on over here. Brain Burst are coming in on these Quarrelers. Massive damage. The Biggin chasing the Clan Breaker down. He's starting to run. Dwarves are starting to route everywhere. This right flank here just needs to be cleaned up. We got a Savage Orc Biggin unit here coming for the flank. The surround and the slaughter. It's on its way. The Wa was just active. We cut through them. And there you go. Vulture Mountain. That's all she wrote. Yeah. Definitely not a Pyrrhic victory. Tormentor Sword's a good item. Really good debuff right there. Great item for a great item, right? I mean, come on. Can't beat it. And yeah, we're just going to occupy us. Now this gives us... This is the second province. The Eidolon Mountains. Our protective shield, you could say. Greybeard's prospectors have found nothing but torment over here. Let's take what should be ours. So, raider... Probably going to be doing some raiding, but... Yeah, we'll do that. Over here, Curse of the Bad Moon. And at this point, we got a little upgrade. Yep, Vulture Mountain's going to lose this building. And we'll be upgrading it. Ark in the Black is sailing. I'm not sure where. Who you're at war with. Perhaps you're going to fight Kemri, but I really would prefer if you just came back over towards your territory. Not near mine, sir. All right. Where's Ugg? All right, Ugg. What do we do with Ugg? Highly questionable as to what we do with Ugg. I could span Ugg and just recruit him later. This magic is real. Oh, this is, oh we're at war. Death Gorge. Hopefully, they, uh, let's see what like, they might have uh, something over there. That would be problematic. We don't want Thoric declaring war on us. Anything you say. Like, what if they have an army? How strong are you? I don't want to lose Ugg. Strong enough. And they, I mean, they, they, their thing isn't really recruiting units, though. It's not really what they do all the time in their settlements. I'm going to take a chance with Ugg here. Well, hopefully I don't regret it. Okay, we don't regret it. I'll go safe, and I suppose he could spend some time, to, you know, causing a lot of attrition here and then taking the settlement. So that's something I have to consider. I'll probably do it. Nubby is Zubby. He's going to assassinate this guy, hopefully. Yeah, all right. Let's go. Surprised he didn't rank up. So we're gonna go growth here as we I don't wanna wait a turn just to get the you know three the three hundred extra gold saved, so going right there. Orzag is ready to make some moves. He's also ready to upgrade more of his Savage Orc Biggins. That'll shred constructs to pieces with the with that boost. His army's fully recovered. Can summon the Skelly Warriors. Alright. All right, we're off. A Pyrrhic victory against this rebellion force. I have no interest in fighting this battle, so sure. And I'll just get some extra money from that. No problems. Chevaliers de Linus have been destroyed. That's great. As did Crooked Moon. Sad to see the Night Gabos go, but they were never part of the prophecy. So, Ark in the Black being over here is giving me a bit of a headache, because I want to conquer his lands, and he has a couple different armies here, and if he was over here dealing with any other problem, I wouldn't worry about him taking my settlement. Specifically Phyrus and Coffer, like, I'll hike, I think I can maybe defend, because I have a pretty beefy garrison there, right? I'm gonna build that. 
Don't need the control uh, orc shaman. It's actually something I forgot to do. We can get a couple orc shamans, as long as he doesn't fuck me over. We can get a few orc shamans. I don't think he will. He's so small. Scarbrand's... It would take him a little while to get there. So, we'll see. If Scarbrand comes over here, then I'm probably going to stop that. Stop that construction. Ugh. Going to do his thing at Death Gorge. See if we could uh, dwindle this thing down. And if they want to sally out, then they'll sally out. It'll be a difficult fight, but I think I can win. Let's take a quick look over here. And that's not happening. I kind of wanted this, but obviously I don't have the scrap right now. So instead, I will go with pulling teeth. Don't think I need to upgrade the walls just yet. I'll save that money. And where is Ag for the moment? I don't necessarily know. Again, Arkin is annoying over there. I mean, I could potentially sacrifice... Like a region or two here might might get destroyed. Hopefully just virus, right? Because it's like the lowest value. For the moment it's not, but it, it will be. Soon. And then I could just eliminate his forces and his provinces. And he might even, the way the AI's been acting, he may even still go for Cetra. So, we're not going to declare war on him yet. Because I definitely want to start at the Sheik. Can I get there and raid? Yes, I can. So I'm going to get over here and raid. Because why not make a little bit of money when I can? Nubsub ranked up. Love to see it. More line of sight for the campaign map. Would be nice. Obviously, it's not that necessary now, but... He just killed somebody, so let's put him over here. So we're going to be block the king over here. King Knock Tomhat. <laughs> Once he decides to move. To counter my uh, advance on his, on his lands. So Vulture Mountain. I'm going to go growth here. We need some kind of growth going. Besides just settlements. I know they're good, but they're not that good. Okay. Ekron's doing fine. Okay, so at this point, we're going to have to wait. Likely going to assault Ashik. We'll see what Arkin the Black does. Alright, the gods are angry. Gork and Mork have become upset with their prophet. I don't believe it. We'll take the angry gods. I, s I don't want to give up that thousand right now. However, I would... 450. That's super cheap to build. For the... It's a one for one. Like, one turn right away. Breaking even. It's pretty good. Okay. Definitely want this to kind of produce a lot of income for us immediately. So... That's what we'll do. I'm going to need this building again. Just in case, but I shouldn't. So we'll go with money. And I will upgrade that. So we have some good little provinces forming here. Yes, Nub, Zub. We're gonna, who do we want to block? Perhaps he would be better to block initially. As Arkin has sailed towards Stormhenge, he's likely going to beach here. I could wait for him to beach. I might wait for him to, be, to beach. Hmm. We all know Ugg's doing his thing. I'm not going to attack that for a wee bit. It's two more turns before I can add some shamans to the to the fray. I am going to send yes. Nubs up over here to block uh, this guy, King Jorman. Hopefully he does it successfully. What do you want? Nice. So he is now <laughs> immobile. All right. Now, I do tell you what. I'm going to call this the end to part three of the Great Green Prophecy. We've made a lot of headway here. About time, right? So we've got two full provinces under our control with a third on the way. And that is the cushion. The launch pad. Look at that. Not too far. Not too far at all. Not too far now. So. Scarbrand, Chilna Garbaraz. He's been very like passive. Super passive. Very strange. So yes, the end of part three. When we come back... Ooh, the followers of Nagash are going to get a bad, 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 bad piece of news. 
he's dead. Until next time.